I was living in Wales in a stone house that was at the foot of the mountains. My husband and I had rebuilt it from a ruin, um, stone by stone, slate by slate. We turned it into our home. We brought up our children there. It was, it was our family home. We grew vegetables, sheep. Visitors came to stay in our, our barn conversion and shared our lives with us. Then in one week that changed our lives utterly and indelibly forever, we lost our house, we lost our livelihood and a few days later my husband of 32 years received a terminal diagnosis and then we lost our future. Everything that we had, we had planned, everything that we had organised for was gone. When we were hiding under the stairs because the bailiffs were knocking at the door and we didn't want to leave the house. I saw a, a book in a packing box called 500 Mile Walkies, where a man had walked around the southwest coast path. And I seized on it like a lifeline. It, it offered the, the promise of a reason to go forwards, of, of a reason to put one foot in front of another, a line on a map. And I desperately needed a map to follow, something to make me go forwards to the next day, some reason to have a next day. It gave us hope. Along the path, it would be predominantly, everything would be about the nature, about the wild landscape, about the, the wind and the rain and the blistering sun. To live so close with the wildlife in a way that you just don't have ability to do in the normal world, to, to be waking in the morning as the fog lifts from the headland and the sun starts to break over the horizon, to hear seal calls in the bay below you and feel the wetness of the salt fog on your face before you even put the kettle on. That's, that's the most memorable point of it. It's possibly, possibly for the real rawness of the wildness of where we were and the actual, the actual closeness to the edge of the land and to the edge of time in a way that we were, was to be on the shattered cliff edge of Land's End. No one there at the tail end of a wild storm that had battered the, battered the cliffs with rolling waves and lashing horizontal rain all day. And as it started to clear, all we could see were the waves coming in and nothing standing between us other, and Canada other than two sheets of nylon. And that gave us the sense of being utterly and completely exposed alone, but as one with the natural world. changed my life forever, not only through walking so far with so little other than, the, other than the things we needed to survive, so little money, so little food consequently and shelter. The loss of those material things gave way to something else. It gave way to a, an ability to, to live in the moment and to not spend each moment worrying about what the next one would hold, but to seize this moment and to hold it. At the moment I'm reading Eric Newby's Love and War in the Apennines. It's a beautiful story about a prisoner of war who escapes and then finds love in the mountains and goes on to live the rest of his life with that woman. It's such a great story, so uplifting. <laughs>